everyone. Welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE, here featuring John Dahl, an entrepreneur and CEO and co-founder of Mux, one of the hottest video platforms and fast growing startups in the industry. Um, they've been selected for this upcoming AWS Startup Showcase in April, on April 5th. John, welcome to this CUBE conversation. Thank you, John. You know, we've been following you guys uh, for a long time, a couple of years now, and, uh, and a customer of your product, as we do the video here. Um, video is at the center of the pandemic and the wave where people are using it for video conferencing. We're seeing all the success, but video has been this dark art. It's been hard to use. It's been um, and, and very difficult, unless you were in the business. But now you guys are bringing a new model, making it easier to use and, and making it developer friendly, which I think is really compelling. So congratulations, love the story. First question, what is the business of Mux, the tech, the consumption model? Can you take a minute to explain what Mux is all about? Yeah, for sure. We are a video platform for developers. So we are APIs to all of the different hard problems that you have to deal with if you want to stream video online. Um, like, like you said, Video is growing. It's a really important part of the internet today. It's a really important part of the future of the internet. Um, and yet it's still really, really difficult to work with. Um, the kind of status quo is you hire video experts and you build your own video platform if you want to stream video online. Um, and so we built Mux in order to do all that hard, heavy lifting for thousands of other companies. So we are core infrastructure uh, for video streaming for companies like you and, uh, and any software company really that wants to work with video. What's interesting is when you look at the rise of the video creator or the influencer or media company or any business, cloud computing has shown the way of a, of a new business model. Stand it up quick, be agile and fast. DevOps is infrastructure as code. You guys are kind of like video as code. I mean, simply just API enable and you're up and running. Is that right? Yeah, that's 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 exactly right. When, when we started the company actually, is we're thinking about how do we want to shape the products. We actually thought about our experience. The, the founders are all developers. We thought about our experience. If we were going to design, if we, if we, if we were going to build software and just uh, think of an abstract API to video as an entity, how would you design APIs that give you that kind of functionality? Um, so we spent a lot of time thinking about API design and the developer experience of what we're doing, uh, really in order to let developers build the way they want, build, build as anything they want with video uh, in, in a, as easy a way as possible. You know, it's interesting, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this because this brings in the whole data aspect of it. You know, building better video with data is something that you guys talk a lot about. And that's a background you guys have come from. You kind of vectored in that way and as developers. So you combine data, analytics with developers, which want to make it easy and fast and get it out there. As you bring that together, what is the real benefit that with this, in this model of the cloud? Can you, can you share your thoughts of how you bring that video and data piece together? Yeah, for sure. It's, it's the kind of thing where um, if you're a software developer and you want to deploy software at scale today, you have to invest in good observability, good monitoring, good analytics, good data. You know, if, if, if you're a dev team and, and your, your company's like, hey, we're just going to turn off all of our monitoring for, for our software, um, you're, you're, you're probably not going to be very happy. Uh, and, yet, and yet a lot of people are streaming video today at scale at high, vol high volumes without really great insight into what actually happens when they stream video. So the first product we actually built was a product called Mux Data, which is an analytics platform for developers operating video platforms. So the user is a DevOps engineer, whoever's on call for, for, the, for the video stack, uh, um, as, well as, as well as marketing teams who want to see how is video being used. Um, so we built that because we, we, knew, we knew how important it was. We, we built video platforms before, um, for, for ourselves, a company called Zencoder, uh, for a company called Brightcove that we ended up spending some time at after selling Zencoder. Uh, and we saw firsthand how impactful data is to building great video streaming. Um, What's the role of cloud in all this? How, how do you guys see the cloud playing into this? Yeah, I mean, at a simple level, we, we run, like everyone, we run our software in the cloud. But I think, I think really what the, what the cloud is and does is a way of abstracting away hard problems from developers. So if, if, if you look at the world today, uh, there's actually more demand for software than there are software developers to build it. Uh, there's just software's going like crazy. There's just huge need for, for software. And so in that kind of a situation, one of the most powerful things you can do is make it easier for developers to build things. So that, that's why dev tools are so important. That's why you see so much growth in, in that area. Uh, and we do that for video. We, we replace, you know, 
tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours of engineering time to build the same thing everyone else has uh, to, to build, you know, your own version of Netflix or YouTube or whatever. Um, so that's kind of how we fit in. But I, I really think that's a lot of what the cloud is, is a way of accelerating the growth of software. You know, Andy Jassy always says in theCUBE, you know, we want to do all the heavy lifting. And that, that sounds yeah. like what Mux is doing. I know you guys have that analytics culture. What influence does that have on your business decisions and the product roadmap? Yeah, um, a couple of things. So, so we really directly use data in our technology. So as we build video streaming, which is our Mux video product, as we build other products over time, um, whenever possible, we want to build them with data first. So we actually have a lot of data into how people stream video and that can inform the way we design products. Um, as a business itself, we also, as we've grown, we've stood up our own analytics team, um, which uh, has just been hugely important. Like we, we, we I have so much more insight into our business now than I did two years ago before we really invested in our own internal analytics team. How, how, how hard was that to do? Um, how hard? It was, uh, it's the kind of thing that, uh, I think it, 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 you, you benefit by hiring experts. So I, I, I know how to, I kind of know how to look at data and make decisions from that, but I'm not, I'm not a trained data analyst. I'm not a data scientist. Um, I'm a software developer. Um, turn, turn founder. Um, and so, you know, I think early when we were small, when we were a 20 person startup, we aspired to be data driven um, or data informed, but it's, it's, it's hard, honestly, at that scale. So as we got bigger, we actually hired, um, it, it was, it was hard to find great people, but we built a really strong analytics team, biz ops team, data engineering team. Um, and I think what we're doing now, we've done over the last year is just learn how to use that data, learn how to leverage all those, that expertise and that data that we have to make better decisions. Well, speaking of data and you got a lot of them coming in because you guys have been highly successful. And again, your product has really hit the right time because people want to code, they want to build into the applications video, video first as everyone's going in data first, video first. What kind of data do you guys have on the use of the video and the rise of the, of the consumption side of it, especially as you're seeing it in every application now? Yeah, I mean, we have we have a couple of things. We have our own growth of video streaming, um, which has grown really quickly. Uh, pro probably no surprise, but I think I think we saw, I think we saw live video grow by just like you measure, but by like three thousand percent in twenty twenty. Um, we just saw a huge explosion of new companies doing live streaming and existing companies that were doing other kinds of video really lean into live. So, so I think we've seen the fastest growth in the world of live. Um, but really we've seen growth across the board on different platforms, different, different types of video. What's your advice to folks out there because you guys now are a key building block. And again, love the API approach, easy to integrate in. Again, we're customers, happy, happy customers on our end. When you see applications being built, what's the trend? What are people doing? Are they rolling their own video apps? Is it, do you guys see you guys as a platform as a service? It's not a tool because you got the platform but there's tools out there. So you get the emergence of more tools and the need for more platform. How do you see this yeah. kind of shaping out? Yeah, it depends how you define the different categories. The way we think about it is we're infrastructure because we sit low down in the stack. So if you build on top of Mux, you're still building your own, you still operate your own video streaming. We just do that. We just do the heavy lifting under the hood. We, we move the bits, we do the encoding. Um, so we're infrastructure. We also see ourselves as a platform because you can build flexible things on top of us. Um, and we have each of the different parts of the video stack. We have video, live video, on-demand video, data, um, player, those kind of things. Um, so I think, I think uh, like, like, like you said, there, there, there's, really, there's really a lot of different related categories that are a little different. So we, we, see, two, we see tooling being something like Mux Data where it's not really the like, operational flow of something. It's it's more on the side to make it better or to give observability or to increase developer productivity. Yeah, data is key um, and yeah. hybrid events are big too. You've seen that. Simulive is a big growth category, I probably imagine. Um, yeah. what, what about um, reliability and uptime? I'll see, I can, admit, I can envision kind of an SRE role emerging around video. I'm sure you guys are dealing with it every day because you're the transport, you're moving bits around. You know, no yeah. one wants downtime. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, again, I think the the infrastructure of video streaming, like we really need to deliver that with exceptional uptime and it, it, everyone that we rely on and we we build on top of other cloud platforms and we build on top of other other tools. Um, 
so we we invest certainly invest a lot in that. I think uh, um, the other side of that is we are that to our customers in some ways, where we give them real time data about what's happening on their platforms. So you know, there, there's stories I can't tell because of NDAs, but like we've had major events where live video has kept streaming because someone detected a problem early using Mux data um, and was able to remedy the problem before it actually impacted users. But um, absolutely, I mean, SR, SREs are- and Cloud are, helps because you can spin up all kinds of queuing and all kinds of cool things. I mean, new microservices could be built in the future is limitless here around video. What are the biggest surprises do you see um, looking back? I know you guys are um, kind of a humble startup, I would say, you guys aren't, uh, going out there too hardcore and hyping things up. You're, you you guys a good product. Um, what's the biggest learnings you look back over the past two years with Mux and video? Um, I mean, I think I think so, so, some of what has been unexpected is the uses of video. I think uh, we we didn't no one expected the pandemic, and we didn't expect all of the ways people would adapt. And we've seen some really fascinating things uh, from. Um, uh, yeah, offline businesses very quickly building their own digital arms, which um, you, you'd think they couldn't, uh, but but a lot a lot actually really successfully did um, back in 2020. Um, and then now, um, a lot of companies going in that hybrid direction, where maybe a yoga studio will forever have in-person classes as well as live stream classes, um, or you know, a university will have in-person and and live streamed or or on demand. What are some trends that you would recommend people to look at if they want to get into doing some video development? Um, what should they stay away from? What should they double down on? Obviously cloud scale is obviously easy to stand things up in the cloud. Um, role of data is important. How should someone roll their own um, with Mux? What's, what's the best yeah. practice? Uh, do you have a, a playbook or things developing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think, I, think um, I mean, we think about it, video is just a high bandwidth way of communicating, um, communicating with you know, one-on-one -on -one or with a group or, you know, learning or, or whatever. And so, you know, for, first understand what, what your audience cares about, understand how video can help drive that communication. Um, uh, and then as you're building, I mean, I think uh, obviously take this with, I'm, I'm heavily biased here, but uh, we don't think, we don't think anyone should build their own video infrastructure today. And unless you can devote maybe 200 full-time engineers to it. I think that, that that's that's a reasonable benchmark for like really starting something from scratch, um, uh, and and going all the way. Um, you know, a, a, a small company, maybe maybe a team of five, can do something. But you you really need to decide um, what's most important to your users and uh, how how do you avoid doing the undifferentiated heavy lifting um, that Andy Jassy talks about. Yeah, and I think you know you guys have the founding team have the years of experience decades of experience collectively between you guys. Um, what's the secret sauce? I mean, you guys look at uh, Mux, if someone asked you uh, two questions, what's the secret sauce and what's the culture like at, uh, mm. at Mux? Yeah. yeah, secret sauce, I think I think for us, it's, it's two things. One is, uh, again, developer experience. So really deeply understanding how do people want to build, understanding how developers um, like to bring APIs on their platform or tooling into their platforms, um, investing a lot in API design and documentation and finding the right abstractions over these hard problems. Um, I think the second is performance. So um, if you're going to do something like video and this applies to any number of other technical products, um, you really need to go deep. So it's really important for us to do things in order to publish video better and higher quality, publish video faster, more higher reliability. Um, and all that. So lots more, if you want, lots more we could dig into there if, if we have time, but the, those are probably the two most important. What's the culture of the company? If you had to define it? Yeah. Um, we, uh, when, when, when you, if you'd ask the team, probably the, probably the first answer you get is be human. That's one of our core values is be human. So we tend to have a culture of, um, caring about people in the company, caring about our customers, uh, treating people like people and not treating people like just, you know, means to an end. Um, I think we also have a culture, uh, we have another, another value of care obsessively. So we have a culture of really caring about doing great work. So we try to hire excellent people who are excited to build great products or to serve customers well. Um, so probably those two would be the, the, um, the, the, the most important. Well, great to have you on, John. Congratulations on the success and uh, uh, of Mux. Thanks for building the product. And again, infrastructure as a service for video, 
whatever you want to call it, it's the beginning of a big wave, video is not going away. It's just has to get easier and easier. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate the conversation. Keep it right there for more coverage from theCUBE. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.